our first episode of 2025, I wanted to look back at 2024 and review the top 10 cybersecurity stories. Number one will not surprise you. This is ThreatWire. Number 10, all of the AI fails. In 2024, AI became more persistent, more present than ever. From ChatGPT struggling to count the number of R's in strawberry, it's three by the way, to AI companies making baffling security decisions, AI firmly established itself as a dubious space for cybersecurity. Rabbit's R1 device, marketed as a personal assistant, was exposed for hard coding API keys that granted hackers access to user data and email systems, issues the company largely dismissed. OpenAI's macOS ChatGPT app stored conversations in plain text and bypassed macOS sandboxing, leaving user data vulnerable until public backlash forced a fix. Microsoft's recall feature, part of their AI-driven Copilot plus PCs, was found to store unencrypted user data, including screenshots and messages, raising ethical and security concerns despite Microsoft's subsequent half measures like encryption and opt-in requirements. Together, these incidents reveal a troubling pattern. The rush to AI innovation often overlooks fundamental security, leaving users' privacy and data at risk. Number nine, the NVD went AFK. The NVD or National Vulnerability Database resumed activity after a prolonged silence during which its operations largely halted. This caused significant delays in CVE processing and created a backlog of vulnerabilities. This lapse is attributed to the establishment of an industry consortium by the NIST or National Institute of Standards and Technology to manage NVD responsibilities. This raised concerns among cybersecurity professionals reliant on NVD's CVSS scoring and metadata for prioritizing vulnerability remediation. At the CNA Summit and VulnCon, NIST's Tanya Brewer announced the consortium structure and eligibility, emphasizing shared responsibilities and funding support. Recent updates revealed the NVD has hired analysts to address the backlog and is implementing a new system for authorized data providers to enhance data processing. Additionally, NVD plans to enrich CVE records with more comprehensive information from multiple sources while improving data organization and system functionality. Despite the progress, the gaps in CVE enrichment earlier this year underscore the critical need for reliable vulnerability management resources. Number eight, so many supply chain attacks. In 2024, supply chain attacks were on the rise with multiple incidents exposing vulnerabilities in popular libraries and ecosystems. Sansec uncovered a major attack on the Polyfill JavaScript library, which after being sold to a Chinese entity, began injecting malware via its CDN. Similarly, Chexmarks reported several Python supply chain attacks, including typo squatting on packages named like files.pypy.hosted.org, targeting developers and stealing sensitive data. A highly specific campaign targeted GCP credentials on Mac devices, while a revival hijacking exploit on PyPy allowed attackers to republish deleted packages with malicious updates affecting automated dependency management. Additionally, malicious NPM packages targeted Roblox developers leveraging typo squatting and malware to compromise systems and deploy rats. But these incidents highlight the escalating threat of supply chain attacks, my favorite, across the software ecosystem, emphasizing the urgent need for robust security measures and awareness. Number seven, Kaspersky banned. Earlier this year, the US government finalized a ban on Kaspersky antivirus software, citing national security risks tied to the company's Russian origins and potential influ influence by a foreign adversary. Effective September 29th, 2024, the ban prohibited the sale, updates, and integration of Kaspersky products, though consulting and advisory services were exempt. In response, Kaspersky ceased U.S. operations in July, alerting customers that cybersecurity coverage would transition to Pango's group's 
ultra AV solution. However, the switch sparked chaos when Kaspersky software was silently replaced with ultra AV tools without user consent, causing confusion, system issues, and public outcry. Was it malware or what was going on? While well, Kaspersky denies posing security threats and highlights its transparency efforts, the move reflects broader U.S. concerns about foreign-based software similar to the debates surrounding TikTok. Meanwhile, sanctions were imposed on 12 Kaspersky leaders, further cementing the growing distrust between U.S. and foreign adversary-linked tech companies. Number 6. Shiny Hunters and the Ticketmaster Fallout Ticketmaster was hacked by the group named Shiny Hunters, who allegedly sold 1.3 terabytes of customer data impacting 560 million users only for $500,000. Initial reports wrongly implicated cloud company Snowflake, leading to misinformation despite Snowflake's denial and investigations by Mandiant and CrowdStrike. These investigations found no compromise of sensitive data. Instead, their breaches stemmed from info stealing malware campaigns targeting Snowflake's customers' credentials, exacerbated by the lack of default MFA. Hackers also exploited third-party contractors like ePAM systems, though ePAM denies involvement. While Ticketmaster filed the required SEC disclosure, Snowflake hadn't, raising scrutiny about the response. Around 165 Snowflake customers were notified of potential impacts, emphasizing the need for enhanced security measures like MFA. Number 5. Welcome Back Net Neutrality on April 25th, 2024, the FCC, led by Commissioner Ana Gomez, voted 3-2 to two to restore net neutrality. This policy originally enacted in 2025 during the Obama administration and later appealed in 2017 under the next administration. Net neutrality ensures that all internet traffic is treated equally by service providers, prohibiting practices like throttling specific websites. Commissioner Gomez emphasizes the importance of broadband as essential infrastructure for modern life, comparable to water and electricity. In addition, they highlighted its role in its safety, health, education, and economy. By classifying broadband as a public utility, the revival of net neutrality aims to improve service accountability, expand access, and support robust internet services nationwide. Number four, Salt Typhoon owns the US telcos. The U.S. telecom system was under scrutiny following the revelation that China-based hacking group Salt Typhoon, aka Famous Sparrow, Earth Estries, Ghost Emperor, or UNC-2286, had infiltrated at least eight U.S. telco companies impacting dozens of countries. Exploiting vulnerabilities in VPNs, firewalls, and Microsoft Exchange servers, the attackers used tools like WIMC.exe and PSEXEC.exe for lateral movement and deployed malware such as Snappy B, Demodex, and Ghost Spider for long-term espionage. These breaches publicized by Trend Micro and acknowledged by the U.S. agencies and their Five Eyes partners highlighted systematic weaknesses in the telco infrastructure. Despite the adoption of end-to-end -end encryption in the RCS messaging standard for Android, messages between iPhone and Android continue to remain vulnerable, prompting intelligence agencies to recommend encrypted apps like Signal or WhatsApp for messaging. However, calls for responsibly managed encryption suggests that the crypto wars do persist with no clear resolution in sight. Number three, XZ Utils Backdoor. On March 29th, 2024, Andres Frund, a Microsoft engineer, discovered a backdoor in the open source XZ Utils compressions tools while profiling unusual CPU usage during invalid SSH logins. The backdoor, presented in versions 5.6.0 and 5.6.1, exploits obfuscated scripts in the build process to inject malicious code, enabling remote code execution as root. Assigned CVE 2024-3094 with a CVSS score of 10. This vulnerability highlights a sophisticated supply chain attack facilitated by social engineering. Suspicious contributors such as Gia Tan and others gained maintainer access to XE Utils, leading to the integration of the backdoor. Though the XE Utils project has primarily been maintained by Lassie Colin, he was misled by malicious attackers. 
This attack underscores the vulnerability in open source software supply chains and the critical need for enhanced oversight and security practices, as well as supporting our local open source developers. Number two, progressions of the Internet Archive. The Internet Archive faced a challenging period with a court ruling and cyber attacks threatening its mission to preserve digital knowledge. On September 4th, the Second Circuit Court of Appeals upheld a decision that the Archive's National Emergency Library, launched during COVID-19, had in fact infringed on publishers' copyrights. It ended up rejecting their fair use defense and compounding on these challenges. The archive suffered a data breach exposing over 31 million user records and a subsequent DDoS attack. This attack was claimed by SN Black Meta Group, temporarily taking its services offline. The breach stemmed from exposed GitLab secrets, including API keys and Zendesk tokens. Despite these setbacks, the archives team is small. 12 engineers are work were working tirelessly to restore operations and bolster security, continuing its vital work to safeguard universal knowledge. They're actively seeking technical staff to help support their mission, so don't be afraid to check it out. Number one, and to no one's surprise, CrowdStrike. On July 19th, 2024, at 4.09 a.m. UTC, a CrowdStrike Falcon update caused worldwide chaos as Windows machines across the globe crashed with the blue screen of death. The issue stemmed from misconfigured channel file 291, critical to managing named pipe execution on Windows. This led to systems failures in industries like airlines, finance, and healthcare. Over 8.5 million devices were affected, disrupting surgeries, halting production, and delaying services globally. Cyber crimes took advantage, spreading phishing scams disguised, disguised as fixes. CrowdStrike fixed the issue within hours, but manual intervention was required, leaving many systems offline for days. The company later reported that 97% were recovered, but faced backlash for its response, including failed damage controlled efforts like canceled food delivery cards. This event, lauded as one of the largest IT failures in history, underscores the vulnerability of global infrastructure dependent on such tools. Amid the chaos, a major cybersecurity acquisition deal involving Google and Wiz also fell through, which we reason may have been influenced by the outage. Thank you so much for watching the 2024 recap. What did you think? Agree on the order or disagree? Let me know in the comments down below, or let me know if I missed a story that you think should have been on the top 10. To be honest, the order was decided by voting and discussions over on my Twitch channel. As a reminder, if you do want to talk about the stories for each threat wire as I write them, be sure to head over and follow me on Twitch or YouTube. I live stream on both. We will be back with our regularly programmed content next week, but as a heads up, I'll be at the final ever ShmooCon this weekend, so I'll see you there. Also, in addition, you'll notice that something looks a little different here. It's because I moved, so as I get the Threatwire setting studio set up, please be kind with me as I figure out how to get the background hung up, because right now I don't have enough space. So I'm gonna make it work though. Let's hope for an exciting year of news stories in 2025 and to kick off the year right. I hope everyone had fantastic holidays and a lovely new year. You can find me online everywhere at Ending With Allie. And as always, good luck, have fun, and don't get caught.